To perform this procedure, you must be qualified to service this specific product. Remove the housing and the exhaust assembly. There are new tools required for this procedure. Be sure to have all required tools on hand. Follow proper ESD guidelines and refer to the service guide for more information. The I.O. and power supply assembly is a module that cannot be ordered for replacement. However, removing it is a required step for other repair procedures. Remove the two T10 screws that connect the I.O. wall to the inlet. Open the two dim mechanisms, but do not remove the memory dims. Remove the two T5 screws from the power supply cover. Lift the power supply cover off of the core assembly. Use the torque driver with the T8 security bit. Remove the four T8 bus bar screws from the top of the core assembly. Place the core assembly onto the foam block. Without straining the attached cable, Lay the I.O. and power supply assembly onto the I.O. wall stand. Use the mezzanine connector removal tool to disconnect the I.O. flex cable from the logic board. Connect the I.O. flex cable to the logic board. Tilt the I.O. and power supply assembly up so it aligns with the core assembly and slides under the bus bars. Install the two T10 screws to connect the I.O. wall to the inlet. This step improves the alignment of the bus bar screws. Use the torque driver with the T8 security bit. Install the four T8 bus bar screws to 7.5 inch pounds or 0.85 newton meter. Install the power supply cover with the two T5 screws. Ensure that the memory dims are seated. Close the two dim mechanisms. To complete this repair, install the exhaust assembly and the housing. Symptoms of an improperly installed I.O. and power supply assembly may include no power or I.O. port issues. Refer to the service guide for troubleshooting. To perform this procedure, you must be qualified to service this specific product. Before performing this repair, remove the components in order. There are new tools required for this procedure. Be sure to have all required tools on hand. Follow proper ESD guidelines and refer to the service guide for more information. Remove the two T10 screws from the I.O. board. Tilt up the I.O. board so it is at a 90 degree angle to the I.O. wall. Use the pointed end of a black stick to open the locking lever of the illumination flex cable connector. Disconnect the cable from the I.O. board. Lower the I.O. board onto the I.O. wall and rotate the I.O. stand so that the large audio cable is in front. Press the locking latch on the audio cable connector to disconnect the audio cable from the I.O. board. Remove the I.O. board from the I.O. wall. Connect the audio cable to the I.O. board. Connect the illumination flex cable and use the flat end of a black stick to close the locking lever. Ensure that the I.O. board seats correctly by aligning the pin on the I.O. board with the hole on the I.O. wall. Install the two T10 screws loosely to maintain pin alignment. Connect an Apple HDMI cable and an Apple USB cable to the ports to maintain alignment with the I.O. board. With the ports aligned, finish installing the two T10 screws. To complete the repair, install the components in order. Symptoms of an improperly installed I.O. board and I.O. wall may include no power or I.O. port issues. Refer to the service guide for troubleshooting. To perform this procedure, you must be qualified to service this specific product. Remove the housing, the roof, and the interposer board cover. Be sure to have all required tools on hand. Follow proper ESD guidelines. Use non-conductive ESD safe tweezers or the pointed end of a black stick 
To disconnect the three wireless antenna cables and the one Bluetooth cable, flip open the locking lever and disconnect the interposer flex cable from the interposer board. Carefully bend back the interposer flex cable. Flip open the locking lever and disconnect the fan cable from the interposer board. Remove the three T5 screws from the top of the exhaust assembly. Remove the wireless card with the attached interposer board from the exhaust assembly. Remove the two T5 screws from the interposer board. When placing the interposer board with the connector side down, ensure that the two locking levers are closed. Wiggle and pull the wireless card to disconnect it from the interposer board. Slide the replacement wireless card into the slot on the interposer board. On the side with the interposer board, install the two T5 screws. Ensure that the Bluetooth cable is routed through the two guides in the wireless card bay. Tilt the wireless card with the attached interposer board into the exhaust assembly. Install the three T5 screws to attach the interposer board to the top of the exhaust assembly. Using fingertips or non-conductive ESD safe tweezers, Connect the fan cable to the interposer board and close the locking lever. Connect the interposer flex cable to the interposer board and close the locking lever. Connect the Bluetooth cable to the wireless card receptacle. Connect the three wireless cables as shown. To complete this repair, install the interposer board cover, the roof, and the housing. Symptoms of an improperly installed wireless card may include an unrecognized wireless card or wireless connection issue. To perform this procedure, you must be qualified to service this specific product. Before performing this repair, remove the components in order. There are new tools required for this procedure. Be sure to have all required tools on hand. Follow proper ESD guidelines and refer to the service guide for more information. The two graphics boards are nearly identical, but graphics board B has a slot for flash storage. Insert the two core end caps into the core cradle. Place the core assembly into the core cradle so that the graphics board being replaced faces up. Use the torque driver with the T8 security bit. Remove the two T8 bus bar screws from the graphics board. Use the torque driver with the T10 bit. Remove the four T10 screws and the leaf spring from the graphics board. Gently shift the graphics board back and forth a short distance to loosen the thermal grease and the thermal pads. Remove the graphics board from the core assembly. Graphics boards have four thermal pads covering the four sets of video RAM or VRAM. When a graphics board is removed, the pads will stick to either the board or the core assembly. The pads must be removed and replaced with new ones. Remove and discard all thermal pads from the core assembly. Use isopropyl alcohol wipes to clean the thermal grease from the core platform. Place the GPU grease stencil onto the core assembly and under the two bus bars. Apply a full syringe of thermal grease to the center of the GPU grease stencil. Use the flat end of an access card tool to evenly spread the thermal grease until all squares are covered. Remove the GPU grease stencil. Adhere the smooth side of four thermal pads to the VRAM on the replacement graphics board. Ensure that each pad is centered over the VRAM. Keep the graphics board level while aligning it over the four screw standoffs. Place the leaf spring on the graphics board with the corners angled up. Use a torque driver to install the four T10 screws in an X pattern with three turns per screw before moving to the next screw. Repeat this pattern until all screws are tightened to 10.5 inch pounds or 1.2 newton meters. Place the flat end of a black stick under the bus bars to steady them. Use the torque driver with the T8 security bit. 
install the two T8 bus bar screws to a torque value of 10.5 inch-pounds or 1.2 newton meters. Remove the core assembly from the core cradle. To complete this repair, install the components in order. After reassemble extended, symptoms of an improperly installed graphics board may include no video on an external display or kernel panic.